Hey guys, Brian Beeler, and thanks for joining the podcast. This week, we've got a, uh, a great conversation with Preetham Mukatira, who is uh, Director of Product Management at Dell EMC, specifically looking, uh, in this case, at the Azure, Azure Stack, Azure Stack HCI, that whole Microsoft-based portfolio. And we're interested in talking to Preetham specifically about a number of things around the HCI offering. They had an update this week with new nodes, but also new software and management capabilities. And, um, you know, I think Microsoft's HCI solution is uh, the unsung hero in in the broader HCI market. It's not something that a lot of people know about, uh, but it's got a great performance profile. We've seen really, you know, lovely things from it, really enjoying our time uh, with all of the uh, Microsoft-based HCI clusters we get in. Uh, so we think it's pretty great. I think you'll like this conversation uh, to get up to date on uh, on the lesser known side of Dell EMC's uh, HCI portfolio. Joining us on the podcast today, we've got Preetham Mukatira, uh, Director of Project Management, Product Management, sorry, over at Dell EMC. Preetham, thanks for joining in today. Thanks, Brian. Glad so to be here. So product management, yeah. Product management's a, 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 broad, uh, a broad title. What, what are you doing specifically at Dell EMC? Yeah, um, so specifically uh, product management and my team, our focus is uh, to uh, define clearly what we want to build and why we want to build something, right? Uh, all keeping kind of the customer and the market in mind, right? Um, in my case, uh, my team's focus is on the Azure Stack ecosystem, right? That covers okay. Azure Stack Hub and Azure Stack HCI. So my team, uh, we work closely with Microsoft and our customers uh, to bring some of the latest innovations on the HCI and hybrid cloud side um, to our customers. Gosh, I think it was probably, um five or six years ago that Kevin and I came down to Round Rock and one of the first iterations, I think, of this product, which may predate you a little bit, at least uh, on the uh, Azure Stack side, was the Azure Pack solution, which was, Dell was, at the time, was one of the first, I think, or maybe of only two or three that were offering that in a uh, in an appliance. I, I suppose you remember those days. I don't, I don't remember working with you on that one specifically, though. Oh yeah, um, I rem remember that pretty well, right? So, in fact, that's how I got into uh, kind of the the Microsoft Hybrid Cloud ecosystem. So, uh, uh, we started essentially with what was then uh, cloud platform systems, and that was the first iteration of building a hybrid cloud. In in those days, hybrid cloud really meant uh, cloud connected, right? As in, your mm -hmm. on-prem infrastructure was connected to Azure, it could leverage some of the hybrid services like Azure Backup or Azure Site Recovery, but it was built on your disaggregated storage, uh, JBARDs, uh, yeah, uh, Windows, Azure Pack uh, on, on Dell infrastructure. So yeah, that's, that's actually how I got started. So uh, um, that's how I, I kind of came into product management and we started to, as that product evolved, uh, we built a team that worked very closely with Microsoft that evolved into Azure um, Stack. So. Right. So it's Microsoft has done a good job of iterating pretty quickly on Pack to Stack and now with Hub and Arc and the HCI products. There's so much going on, even the, a cloud managed uh, a solution for remote office or, or maybe edge locations. Um, You've been there for most of that journey. What have you seen as as the progression has taken place over the last few years? Yeah, it's a it's a very interesting and dynamic space, right? So uh, while we started uh, with cloud platform systems in Azure Pack, uh, the promise of hybrid cloud was really that cloud connected. Uh, but uh, we spent a lot of time with our customers globally, right? Understanding their feedback, their requirements, what hybrid really meant. To, to our customers, right? And you would uh, get a really b broad spectrum, but you could kind of essentially bucketize them into two groups, right? Uh, one group was uh, looking to bring Azure on-prem, 
right? So essentially, they had started to move some applications or started to develop applications in Azure. Uh, they wanted to bring that on-prem, right? That was one group of customers. The second group of customers wanted really to be more efficient, right? Uh, uh, be uh, more uh, streamlined, uh, reduce complexity, simplify management of their existing data center footprint. And for them, uh, they were looking at a, a, a more of a cloud model, right? A cloud operating model rather than, uh, uh, than Azure itself. But they really liked the sort of uh, the connectivity or the the uh, uh, the option to be able to leverage cloud for things like DR, right? So where you don't okay. have to stand up your own DR infrastructure. So uh, during those early days, we saw kind of this broad spectrum that we were able to bucketize, and that's really how you saw our strategy evolve from Azure Pack into Azure Stack. And literally today, if you say Azure Stack is two buckets, right? Azure Stack Hub and Azure Stack HCI, right? So mm -hmm. we can almost trace the progression to where we are today from some of those conversations we had uh, back then. Way back when, yeah. So it's yeah. so it's really interesting because I think with the the pack solution back in those early days, I mean Microsoft and with Azure were really on the on the front edge of this and you know we'll we'll get to it in a second you can't ignore yeah. the vmware part of your business and i want to talk about that just a little bit even though i know it's not yours but oh, you're going to go there <laughs> <laughs> for, just to help everyone understand uh but in the early days i mean microsoft really had a, a a nice lead and i think that's underestimated or undervalued maybe by uh by people today that that really see and why don't we get it? We'll just get straight into it. Let, let's see some of the things that you guys have done on the VMware side with uh, VMware Cloud Foundry, with Rail, with the Ready Nodes. I mean, there's been a lot of emphasis there for good reason. I feel like on the Azure side, you guys just don't get quite as much love in the organization, but have been around doing this for a very long time and have what's a uh, what's become a pretty hardened solution. <laughs> No, I think it's a, it's a great point, right? And a lot of our customers have similar questions as well. So um, I think, first of all, uh, VMware is absolutely a critical part of the Dell Technologies ecosystem, no doubt. Um, at the same time, Microsoft has been a long-standing Dell partner, right? For us at Dell, uh, we have the luxury to uh, partner with both, right? And uh, mm -hmm. bring the best of breed for both because what we have found out from our customers, again, is customers aren't picking one or the other, right? It is not a choice of VMware versus Microsoft when it comes to our customers. They're very discrete use cases where customers are looking to deploy mission critical uh, apps that run uh, traditional applications uh, uh, on uh, VMware infrastructure. They're gonna continue to do that. Uh, at the same time, there are a certain a group of customers as well as uh, divisions within uh, other customers that in other enterprises that run uh, Hyper-V, uh, Windows Server, uh, and that continues to be the case. And for us, we want to meet our customers where they are at, right? And we want mm -hmm. to make sure we are delivering value to the business, not having them um, constantly having to pick sides. So yeah, I I, I think we've built a great uh, uh, a very a, a great positioning between uh, the VMware ecosystem and the Microsoft ecosystem that can meet our customers where they are. So. so so tell me a little bit about that. Where are you seeing customers, either verticals or named customers that you can talk about? Where are you seeing success with the Azure-based offerings, either Hub or, or HCI? And how is that, maybe if you can talk a little bit about those workloads that are unique or or why Microsoft technologies are are suitable for those uh, those use cases. Yeah, uh, and I'll start with Hub, right? So um, Hub is is an easy one in many ways because it is Azure, right? In in mm -hmm. Hub, you're essentially deploying your own region of Azure, whether it's in your data center or in your edge location, you're deploying your own region of Azure, right? So that's that's easy, and you're consuming your Azure IaaS and PaaS services. Uh, whether it's web, uh, DB, or IoT services, uh, you're going to, uh, and you've started in Azure, but you have clear use cases, whether that it is security, data sovereignty, or um, even sort of latency to keep your data, 
keep your processing closer to the edge, uh, you use Azure Stack Hub, right? It's it's pretty clear, cut and dry, right? With Azure Stack HCI, a lot of the customers we are targeting are customers who already have a Hyper-V install base, a Hyper-V sure. ecosystem, right? Uh, and for them, uh, HCI is a great opportunity to again modernize, right? To uh, simplify management, uh, reduce the complexity in terms of how they size their system, how they deploy their system, how they scale their system, and that's that's um, that's really uh, where we see a lot of opportunity for the HCI space. And within the Hyper-V Windows Server space, over 50% of our customers are running 2012 R2 and or older, right? So there is a massive market there to modernize. And uh, the best system to modernize is really your HCI uh, system, right? So yeah, um, and, I think I well, answered they, one part of the, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I want to go. I want to hit on one thing because I want to be sure that we're clear on this that that it's not necessarily always one or the other. Too, you could pair sure. HCI with Hub. You can pair HCI with Azure in the cloud using. Uh, Azure Site Recovery. I mean, there's a hundred different ways to do this, and and it's not just one or the other. No, absolutely right, and and we see this with um, most of, and especially uh, some of our large enterprise customers. They have VMware, they have uh, Microsoft. Some even have OpenStack. Right, there there are still oh a few gosh. OpenStacks out there. You know, so that's it is what it is. But uh, uh, so there is a. Um, uh, there, there is that large ecosystem, and uh, particularly with Microsoft, we see a lot of growth in uh, to kind of what you had asked earlier, right? In in regions like uh, Europe, uh, EMEA, uh, Asia Pac, uh, right there too, we are seeing um, some of the uh, high growth areas: uh, Eastern Europe, uh, Southeast Asia. Uh, the greater China. So there is there are a lot of regions where we are seeing massive cloud growth. And tied to that cloud growth is uh, the growth in on-prem hybrid solutions as well, right? So mm -hmm. I think we've uh, it, it spans industries, of course, the industries with the highest data sovereignty uh, and regulatory requirements are the, the ones that are most excited or are the early adopters of this. But uh, the second wave of adoption is going to come from uh, edge computing, right? And the need to run these Azure services or rapidly deploy innovation to the edge closer to your data. So, yeah. Yeah, well, we've certainly seen that as a, uh, a big movement. And, you know, I guess we used to look at it as sort of remote office, branch office. But with all of these devices, whether it's security cameras or analytics or... Uh, use cases like driving uh, displays at uh, at a gas station, right? That something's got to drive all of all of those interactions, and setting up cumbersome large infrastructures in these places often isn't isn't tenable or even possible. So having something like this that can quickly go out to the edge is 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 pretty. I mean, it's happening, right? You have customers, I presume, at this point that are doing that with the HCI product. Yeah, absolutely right. And, and again, going back to how we started uh, uh, the the early part of the conversation, the cloud platform systems, right? CPS, Azure Pack. When we were bringing back in 2013, 2014, uh, when that was the conversation, uh, Edge meant Robo, really, right? Mm -hmm. That was uh, where uh, deploying some of these applications in um, locations within sort of retail. Uh, uh, and some of these uh, robo-like systems was what the conversation was. But what we've seen over the last few years in particular, it's it's become more about and uh, tied to the growth of 5G and and uh, more devices closer to the edge, there is a there is a ton of data being generated there. Um, and some of our customers today have to incur high costs in terms of time and actual uh, costs to transfer the data over to a public cloud, process it there, and get the results back, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, for a lot of them, it makes a lot more sense to deploy that inference or uh, application or uh, closer to the data and be able to process it in real time. So uh, it's it's starting to become a, 
uh, 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 starting to go down the model where your innovation is deployed to the edge and that's where you want infrastructure that is also easy to manage, easy to deploy, easy to scale. Um, so yeah, it's, it's um, uh, a, a large use case, particularly globally, is smart cities. Right? Smart cities are coming up across the world, right? especially developing uh, countries and uh, um, uh, are hugely embracing that concept. And with that comes in a ton of sensors, cameras, uh, end user devices, uh, that explosion of growth means more infrastructure needs to be deployed um, closer to the data. So, yeah. So let's talk about the infrastructure a little bit, because I think that's important, especially in the context of the HCI portfolio. Um, you had an announcement this week, new uh, new nodes, new uh, some new open manage and lifecycle controller uh, management types of uh, integrations. So let's sort of break down what you did there uh, this week, starting on the hardware side. So you guys have been based on PowerEdge for some time. That's not necessarily new, um, but you've got some new nodes out. And yeah, the yeah, highlight, uh, well, yeah, go through. What, what's your favorite part? You've got three new nodes. Let's talk through some of those. Yeah, so uh, in, in some ways, right, we, this is for us, uh, th there are two parts to uh, uh, the announcements you'll hear this week, right, between us and Microsoft. This is a very interesting time because of sort of the timing of even today's podcast as well as the announcements that came out, right? So one, the first part of it, let me break down what we are doing today, right? Um, yeah. Today, a large portion of our customers, uh, not a large, all of our HCI customers are on Windows Server and S2D, right? So uh, at Dell EMC, our strategy has to be has been to ensure our customers are successful, right? Deploying uh, their HCI infrastructure. It is not about providing hardware or power edge or uh, or piece parts, right? It's about making sure they are successful. To do that, we take a full lifecycle view of uh, the product, right? Uh, which means uh, uh, coupled with the hardware infrastructure are software assets that automate uh, day zero and day end operations, right? Mm -hmm. That has been core to how we've approached uh, HCI uh, across all our HCI products, right? Not just the Microsoft ones, and even within the Microsoft with Windows Server and S2D. So the AX uh, announcement that came out today in a sense is carving out a very specific uh, uh, strategy for us that says, yes, this is built on PowerEdge, but AX has certain values, right? Values being it is purpose-built, it is engineered, it is uh, automated, uh, lifecycle managed, uh, not just at a node level, but at the cluster level, right? Which is actually what customers deploy again, right? So that's really one part of the AX announcement, right? That we made, mm -hmm. um, that's, that's really key. Um, the other piece that you've heard uh, that Microsoft uh, uh, brought up and sort of announced at Inspire today was around Azure Stack HCI OS. Right. right. Um, so as I said, the first part was Windows Server plus S2D. Uh, Microsoft sees this as a good opportunity for them to um, uh, really build out a discrete uh, HCI OS that's based on Windows Server and S2D uh, uh, at its core, but discrete in the sense that you can now rapidly deliver innovation uh, to this HCI OS as well, right? Uh, with the Windows Server, it was based on your LTSC releases that came every two to three years, and you had to align with that. HCI, we expect more rapid innovation features to be added more frequently, right? Whether it is stretch clustering, which was announced um, uh, this week, or other features that will come up new, uh, newly in the HCI OS. The goal is to uh, uh, deliver those rapidly. And that's why uh, the idea was to create this new OS um, and ensure that we can uh, meet again customers where they are. And, this, uh, and on the Dell EMC side, this takes our partnership to the next level, right? So uh, from that legacy Windows Server OS to now this Azure Stack HCI OS. And in many ways, Microsoft's strategy here validates our approach, right? So our approach being this automated uh, product-like approach. So now with this HCI OS, Microsoft is treating HCI as its own product, right? So it gets mm -hmm. the VAC integration, uh, the uh, deploy and day, uh, 
uh, uh, deploy and day-in operations uh, from both Microsoft and Dell EMC, right? So it's in some ways, that's really um, solidification of our strategy in some ways. And uh, uh, it's great to see that coming from Microsoft as well. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Inspire, for those that don't know, is their partner conference, yeah. right? So this is the, right. their annual annual now virtual partner conference. The uh, So on the hardware side, I know... I know you guys don't get wrapped up in the hardware as much as the overall solution. However, the the new there's a couple things I want to point out. You've got support, and actually to take one step back, Microsoft's done a really great job with HCI to engage new technologies in many ways faster mm-hmm. than their competitors. Persistent memory is one of those, and now I uh, right. yeah, you've got support for that in the AX640. Uh, which is great. So that's um, an opportunity if somebody has a very high performance need to be able to leverage those uh, those PMM modules. So that's pretty cool. But the other one I think that's that's exciting is the AMD node. And there aren't a lot of those out there for the Microsoft HCI solution. Uh, just, you know, I know, like I said, you're not really pushing the hardware as much as the solution, but just take a minute on the hardware and let's talk through that and, and what's, uh, what's going on there and what you guys are excited about. Yeah. I, I mean, hardware is still the foundation is foundational for us, right? It's, it's still core to what we deliver. And again, there, right. We, uh, we look at our, we have an Intel platforms, which, which meet our customers' needs in terms of capacity, performance. You, we have our uh, 640-based platforms that give you that that 1U uh, high density uh, that's also good for some of your uh, robo-like uh, locations. And then we have our 740, which, ha- which is one of our most versatile platforms, right? Uh, a majority of our nodes sold today are our 740, and it has many configurations from hybrid to all flash. Um, so... I think we uh, um, we've got a good breadth covered between the 640 and 740, uh, including NVMe based configurations, and that can meet mm-hmm. our customers whether it is general purpose virtualization, whether they're looking at web apps, databases, SQL. Uh, so we've got a good breadth there, right? But AMD is also exciting because now uh, we can bring this high core count, right? The the innovation that AMD is bringing to their uh, uh, processors to now HCI and really uh, uh, cover that breadth uh, when it comes to what our customers want, right? So uh, we've got, uh, we're starting with the uh, uh, the 6515 AMD 1U box mm-hmm. uh, today, right? That's, um, and then uh, we'll talk about roadmap discussions to bring some of the to you boxes as well um, uh, soon. So we believe there is, uh, and with some of the densities you get out of the AMD platform and even the innovations that can drive uh, to the storage side as well, I think we are really well covered between Intel and AMD um, to, to kind of give us give our customers the breadth there of choice. Yeah, it, it's, um, it's interesting because I think the other thing too that, that may be not as well known is that uh, Azure Stack HCI is perfectly capable of running in a two node cluster, uh, which uh, is not always the case with HCI that some need multiple, at least three, but some need more nodes than that. Um, so that's an important note. And to that end, uh, right. as, I, as I think you know, we've got that cluster in right now with the uh, the AS, AS 640s that was actually supposed to be at Inspire. If if that had gone off in person, we we wouldn't have this lovely uh, keel case full of uh, of uh, Azure Stack HCI gear from you. But uh, we'll be going down that road and and looking at looking at workloads, looking at things like SQL Server that happen at the edge, and looking specifically in this case, I think we're really interested in resiliency, what the systems That's are right. capable of. Um, what happens if something fails at the edge? What sort of protections are in place? I think that kind of stuff, you talked about some of these uh, workloads like analytics and inference and that kind of thing. That's all great, but your system's got to be operational <laughs> for that to, to happen, right? And you got to be able to lose a drive or a node or a NIC or whatever and keep cruising. Um, 
So that's what we're interested in. And I know you just you hit on it when you were talking before about the integrations with uh, Windows Admin Center, WAC, as the, the mm -hmm. cool kids call it. Um, but you've got some new integrations or enhanced integrations with Open Manage there. Talk about manageability and and what's important there because you, you did touch on the cluster management but i just want to dive a little deeper there yeah. talk about lifecycle controller manager talk about idrac access for out of band whatever you want it's it's yeah. it's open to you yeah uh, and uh, so we often uh, focus about getting a system up and running when and some of the automation needed there right that's that's kind of some of the first things we do because that's some of the, that's the first experience customers get but um, but what matters the most to them is um, what uh, what it takes to uh, operationalize a system right and manage a system and this is where uh, sort of since uh, we've been working kind of more on the cloud side the cloud operational model is very important to us right it's just like when you go to Azure, you get a system uh, that is fully operational. You don't worry about the patches or updates to it. It just works, right? And the latest gets applied. We've been uh, heavily inspired by that model uh, in terms of how we bring and deliver our infrastructure as well, right? Because in the end, if customers are looking at uh, simplicity and um, uh, uh, essentially reducing complexity, uh, we, that should apply to also their day and operations, right? Uh, some mm -hmm. of the, what we've learned uh, talking to a lot of customers, as we add, bring in more technologies to the infrastructure, uh, complexity rises for them, right? They've got to learn this new technology, understand how to manage it and operationalize it. And we don't want our customers to focus there, right? We want our customers to focus on the outcomes, what applications they want to deploy that, how are they going to manage their their uh, applications, how are they going to manage and onboard their tenants, right? In the end, we want them to look at themselves as a service provider, right? Uh, uh, or a cloud provider to their internal organizations. So uh, that's that's really kind of the, the uh, premise to how we've approached this. And in order to deliver that, uh, patching and updating is one of the biggest pain points a, lo a lot of our customers find, especially patching and updating of a complex system, right? That includes compute, storage, networking. And we are also talking about bringing in some of our best of breed data protection and storage uh, as well into this ecosystem, right? So mm -hmm. life cycling that is very critical and patching and updating uh, is very critical, right? Especially when it comes to quarterly patches or updates or even monthly security updates, uh, our customers need to be very nimble there. And that's where uh, we invest heavily into automation. And in this case, we want it to be an integrated experience into WAC, right? So with uh, Microsoft's ability uh, uh, to update the OS, we come in, integrate with Microsoft in a cluster aware manner, as in we drain nodes, uh, ensure your workloads continue to run, there is no disruption to your workloads, and we update uh, the the node with one reboot, right? We don't want different tools coming in and updating the same node and causing right. a longer downtime, right? We want just enough downtime and make sure our node is updated and brought back, uh, rehydrated into the cluster, right? So that's that's really a huge focus area for us um, going into uh, some of the sort of day, day and innovations that we're bringing to the table. So when you think about what you guys have done with Rail, basically putting that management layer on top of a bunch of ready nodes and 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 taking all that operational benefit and rolling it into a similar concept. How do you see this becoming uh, an appliance? Like you're starting to get there. Maybe you're closer than I think. But do you feel like this is almost an appliance like Rail? I mean, what what are the similarities or differences there in terms of depth of integration? Yeah, I, I think in terms of how we are approaching it, we have we want to be consistent across our approach for HCI, right? Rail has taken an appliance model, which we believe is the right model for a lot of this for a lot of our customers who uh, want to reduce complexity, right? So that is why uh, you'll see a lot of things in common. For us, the the uh, move towards an AX brand is highlighting our intentions, right? It clearly states our intention is to be that appliance 
uh, to offer you this fully automated experience. And again, PNU is one aspect. The other is things like call home, right? The mm -hmm. ability to detect uh, a failure and report back to our support engineers even before a customer is aware of it, right? Our customer knows it. So our support can be ready to resolve that. So those are things we want to bring in and that's kind of bringing that full gamut of day and operations. And yeah, you'll... At, if you start to compare, you'll see a lot in common across the board, uh, uh, across our, our portfolio, because we have a consistent set of sort of brand values, right, when we bring an appliance to market. Um, okay, well, that makes sense. And it, just the cluster management stuff, I think, is is a big differentiator, because I'm not sure that others that offer uh, Azure Stack HCI have made that necessarily investment required to handle both the the OS and the Microsoft applications in addition to the drives, the NICs, the Absolutely. you know this the system itself, the bio, all those things that that may need to be uh, updated and that makes a big difference. That, that's really the difference too in some cases of having to have somebody on site to manage that and the ability to to kick that off remotely or you know using you know, some other methodology for, for rolling those updates out. Uh, yeah, that's, Absolutely. Uh, that's yeah. pretty fun. Yeah, and in, yeah. in the current environment that we are in, right, there is uh, more automation, more remote management uh, only helps our customers, right? Uh, because at this, in these times, we don't want our customers to worry about managing infrastructure, having to go in, and uh, figure out where the problem lies, uh, give them different tooling, uh, uh, one for your uh, hardware to connect to your out-of-band um, uh, controller and, uh, and troubleshoot what's going on there, uh, and then uh, go to another subsystem for something else. Right. Uh, the whole integrated management approach, the call home approach, uh, all that make it uh, uh, seamless so our, our customers really can focus on uh, the value they deliver. So we, we talked a little bit about two node. I think that's a, a popular or will be an increasingly popular you know, buying modality for, for the edge. And that's great. Uh, but I don't want to minimize the scale that, uh, that stack HCI can accomplish. I think it's something like 16 nodes and three petabytes or something in one, uh, one cluster. I mean, that's, if, if that's right, that's pretty good amount of storage and compute in that's 16 right. nodes. Okay, so you can do that, yeah, and then you, I know you can yeah. you can do what set up several clusters and have thousands conceivably of of nodes. So that there, there's a lot of room to grow for, with these things. Absolutely right, and again, uh, we are continuously working closely with Microsoft to see how we can even expand that further. Right um, on the. Uh, 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 you, you'll start to see on the on the Azure Stack Hub side uh, talk about multi-scale unit, right? Which is essentially taking your single 16 node uh, and the ability to expand that beyond 16, right? Uh, and it's really a capacity expansion. So a lot of the underlying technology is still HCI um, based on uh, 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 some of the the, um, the HCI window server technologies. So. Absolutely. I think this, uh, HCI will also see uh, the benefits of that. And again, this is why we need a vehicle through which we can innovate and deliver uh, capabilities faster, not wait for the LTSC Windows Server cycle to uh, push um, updates. But yeah, 60 nodes today with the amount of density we have in terms of cores, in terms of memory, in terms of storage, is is really high so uh we can meet majority of our customers demands through that flexibility that we uh, we offer today yeah and i suppose if you need more you can connect to the cloud right get more capacity right. and so so we've spent some time with uh, azure site recovery and that's pretty cool what what are you seeing in in the field though with your hci customers are you seeing much cloud engagement? Is it mostly on-prem? If they're engaging with the cloud, what are they doing? I'm just sort of curious to understand what you're seeing in, in practical terms. Yeah, uh, I, I would say during the early days of, of hybrid, right, one of the most interesting and value-added uh, capabilities was Azure Site Recovery, right, uh, from a hybrid, uh, in, the, in the context of hybrid, because uh, 
you literally i mean you could uh, uh, you you had this dr capability without standing up a dr infrastructure right mm -hmm. and it's not just having that capability you could even have dry runs right you could uh, test your dr capability with azure as well uh, without having that infrastructure or paying for that infrastructure right so you would only pay for it in the event of a disaster right so mm -hmm. that is i i think by far the biggest uh, uh, the most important uh, hybrid use case a lot of our customers find but now with the hci os i think uh, the idea of bringing more um, um, sort of uh, features onto this i think having the ability to um, uh, to monitor your infrastructure and sort of have it azure connected so you're managing to a certain degree you you you, are, you have visibility into your hci clusters in your azure portal i think is a big one right uh, having that azure resource provider the ability for that to talk to your hci cluster and show your hci resources in the azure portal i think it's going to help a lot of our customers right i think uh, that's been one of the other uh, asks we've heard a lot especially customers who who've got both Azure and Azure Stack HCI. Um, but I think overall customers are excited about bringing more of the Azure services to uh, on-prem as well, right? Once you have connectivity to Azure, uh, you've, you guys have heard of Azure Arc that was announced last year. Yeah. Uh, there are more data services uh, uh, that, that could come on board. Uh, we can the, the the sky's the limit now, right? So you have this, uh, the, the ability to bring a, a broader range of services not your just your traditional IaaS or your traditional general purpose vms or applications uh, onto this infrastructure so i think we're just getting started there i'm really excited to see in the, in the coming months uh, years what um, what we do with the hybrid capabilities well how much education are you having to do with your customers on what's available there uh, because we really love microsoft in many ways but they don't always socialize these things really well. And, you know, if, if I'm being honest, I think they could do more education, more uh, information on the HCI product. It's still, it is still one of the, I don't know if it's the best kept secret in HCI, but it's certainly close because the performance, and, you know, I know that's not always the lead, but the performance that's there is amazing. The embracing of new technologies like we already talked about persistent memory is is impressive not that everyone needs it but the fact that it's there if you want it is n not true across all other uh, hypervisors yeah. or hci clusters so there's a lot there but so what do you have to do from an education standpoint to help customers say you know th this this hardware and software solution solves your current on-prem pain and that's great but here's all the other stuff you can do to integrate with Azure and the services like we've talked about uh, Site Recovery Manager, uh, but whatever else is available. Do you have to do a lot of hand-holding there? Do customers already understand that? Um, and maybe it's just a wide, yeah. a wide gap. I, I think there is never a, um, a, a I'm done kind of state in communication, right? You've got to be constantly communicating. Uh, sometimes over communicating is 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 better than uh, under communicating, right? So, sure. I think overall uh, we can all do a good job, right? I, especially I I think Microsoft has realized that, uh, and that's one of the reasons they are carving out this Azure Stack HCI OS, right? They really wanted to have a dedicated focus not just uh, within some of the marketing organizations, but overall from product to marketing to sales, which is how we have also been operating uh, with our AX nodes, right? We've, we, we've uh, treated it as a discrete product, discrete set of use cases. Uh, we uh, have customer case studies that we, uh, we build and share so other customers can learn from uh, our experience, right? So, uh, and we are, uh, uh, and that's, uh, and I think coupled with our services consulting organizations, we've mm -hmm. got a lot of that in place today uh, to help our customers rationalize this and uh, derive value, right, from these hybrid capabilities. 
but I think Microsoft is uh, with this uh, move. They are really signaling to the market that they are serious about this. So far, yes, to your point, they've been dabbling. They've had HCI for a long time, but it's yeah, to your point, it's right. the best kept secret, right? It was it was uh, Gartner didn't track them, IDC didn't track them, Microsoft couldn't track it, right? Because it was a feature of the OS. Uh, so yeah, it was um, it was a it was a server OS sale, and and even for the longest time, they were calling it uh, well S two D is what you've said a couple times, but Storage Spaces Direct. Yeah, WSSD and, and all, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the naming was, was not great. It was confusing calling it storage when it was more. Yeah, so that's yeah, right. clearly I see your point. Yeah, so I think that's that's definitely well, a benefit. And yeah, we'll, uh, uh, there's a lot of work still ahead, but we're excited uh, to see how that evolves. <laughs> well, you're making good progress. I think the work that you guys are doing uh, will help drive, obviously, the awareness because you're making a concerted effort there. And I, I mean, you can tell the difference. You're not just floating out nodes and saying, okay, here's a ready node for HCI for Azure Stack, go enjoy customer and, and have fun and then stop there. It's the software integration that's really going to be the differentiator for these things. Because you know, yeah. as much as we love PowerEdge, we've got probably 30 of them in our lab at the moment. You know, at the end of the day, there are a lot of great servers that can run Azure Stack HCI. It's what, what goes beyond that to to make, like you said, day and day 100, day 1000, that experience and that manageability and, uh, and that total cost of ownership, reduce that and, and just make it a good, a good time. I mean, that's, that's, that's the, true, uh, yeah. that's the trick, right? Yeah. No, yeah. All right. And, well, and for what's, us, um, what's in yeah. that? Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I just was going to say that uh, for us, right, we constantly ask ourselves, where can we add value to our customers, right? This is, yes, this right. is HCI, but where can we add value? And that's, yeah, it's tied to that. Okay, so we've got, you've got new nodes, new software integration, a lot of momentum coming out of Inspire, uh, a lot of excitement around that product. So what what's next? Go sell, 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 or do you have uh, other short-term goals on the radar? Well, this is another thing that's often not not very clear when an announcement happens at uh, at a Microsoft forum. Uh, these are not <laughs> orderable yet. This is uh, this is ongoing work. Uh, this is uh, um, signaling what what's coming up in the near future, right? So, uh, right. Uh, quote unquote. And so, uh, uh, I would say let's uh, stay tuned. Ignite is going to be an important milestone coming up soon after. In the next coming months, uh, so uh, mm -hmm. we'll we'll make more um, uh, of our intent and next steps clear there. But uh, uh, we already have a fantastic platform with the AX uh, Windows Server S2D. Uh, we have approached it as a HCI system already, right? So customers today right. can deploy HCI with Windows Server and S2D, right? And uh, yeah, uh, I, I think that's that's a great start um, as we progress into this new partnership relationship with Microsoft. Uh, but yeah, so uh, uh, we've got an exciting second half uh, ahead. Um, well, great. Well, we're looking forward to it. Like I said, we've got your cluster in now, and we intend to do, uh, uh, you know, look at some workloads like SQL Server that are commonly occurring out there at the edge, and then uh, we'll get some video of it when we make the system go through pain of, of failing a node and, and looking at things like what does this cluster management software look like? How does it work when it goes through and, and does updates? Uh, Microsoft's always good for pushing updates, so I don't think we'll have any problem finding <laughs> finding <laughs> reasons to to run that uh, to to run that update. So uh, you know, I know we're looking forward to it, and uh, uh, happy you guys sent that over. So that's that's our next steps. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for joining today, uh, Preetham. This was a great conversation. The uh, uh, the less told story of HCI at Dell EMC. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Yeah, Brian, uh, great conversation. Thanks for having me. Thanks to Preetham again for joining us on the podcast. Uh, great conversation. Like I said, we're going to be working over this cluster uh, that we've got. If you've got any thoughts or questions, hit us up on our subreddit, reddit.com slash r slash storage review. Happy to have a conversation there or info at storageview.com or Twitter or Instagram or anywhere social posts can be made. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back next week.